Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, several people are killed by police in a dawn raid in Kinshasa as officers try to arrest the leaders of a separate, separatist cult. Also, people living in Port Harcourt have been protesting over environmental pollution that they've blamed on a local Chinese-run asphalt factory. And I'm joined by the founder of the Africa International Film Festival, Chioma Ude, six years ago first started the festival that brought together the cream of the crop of Nollywood and beyond. But first, witnesses say that at least four people were killed in Kinshasa on Tuesday after police raided the home of MP and cult leader Ne Mwanda Semi. His followers belong to the BDK religion and want to revive the pre-colonial Congo kingdom and security forces have clashed with several members in the east of the country over the last few weeks. However, the spread of violence to the capital indicates a serious escalation. Thomas Nicolon tells us more. Dozens of armed police tried to enter the home of uh, Mwandan Semi on Tuesday morning in Kinshasa. Mwandan Semi is the leader of a cult called Bundu Dia Congo that seeks to revive uh, the pre-colonial Congo kingdom and that led many attacks in the past few weeks in the Congo Central province and this is why the police tried to enter the house of uh, Bunduja Congo's leader uh, on Tuesday morning but according to the government spokesman well uh, the members of the cult uh, were resisting and did not want the police to get in and this is when the clash has happened when we got there, we could see dozens of wounded people, but also three dead bodies on the sheets. Uh, it is hard to know in which circumstances these people have died, but the Bundudia Congo members say they are unarmed, although it is uh, impossible uh, to confirm this. Many wounded were still evacuated when we were there by the Red Cross, and uh, we have been unable to reach the Congolese police spokesman for an official statement. Six Ivorian journalists who were arrested on Sunday and charged with spreading false information have been freed. Their arrest had sparked international condemnation and accusations of scapegoating by the government. They were held in connection to their coverage of a recent spate of mutinies over pay by soldiers and accused of inciting them to revolt. Gambia's new president, Adamo Barrow, met Boris Johnson in Banjul on Tuesday. Johnson is the first serving British Foreign Secretary to visit the West African nation, and the trip was a bid to reset ties after years of tensions with Barrow's predecessor, Yaya Jame. The trip's also Johnson's first to the continent as the UK's top diplomat. It comes as Gambia said that it hopes to rejoin the Commonwealth group of former British colonies. Jame withdrew in 2013. Gambia has also notified the UN that it plans on rejoining the International Criminal Court, reversing yet another controversial move by Jame last year. 16 countries, including Zambia, Malawi and South Africa, held an emergency meeting in Harare on Tuesday to discuss a new threat faced by Southern Africa. Usually found in the Americas, the fall armyworm is wreaking havoc with crops and has so far proved impossible to wipe out. The pest is so devastating that farmers have compared it to a biblical plague. The hungry caterpillars are on the move across the continent and their fears that if they're not contained, they could exacerbate food insecurity at a time when the region's facing its worst drought in more than 30 years. To Nigeria now, where people living in Port Harcourt have been protesting environmental pollution that left, that's left rooftops, cars and even faces lined in black soot. Locals blame the effect on a Chinese-run asphalt factory that they say is the cause of the problem. In Port Harcourt, black soot is everywhere. These protesters say their health is under threat. A lot of us are suffering from our nurseries, from the water we drink, from the water we bat, to everything, you wake up in the morning to black particles surrounding us and making us unhealthy. Demonstrators blame this Chinese-run asphalt factory. They complain about heavy smog coming from its furnace. In response to the protest, the local government shut down the plant, whose asphalt products are used in road construction. 
These matters, we can go and show them two or three plants. We may bomb two or three sites, but these matters eventually strike at the very, very fabric of our, of our federal system. We must make sure we control the situation. The soot is not only in the streets, but also inside people's houses. Look at soot now. Scientists explain that particle pollution like soot can be linked to heart diseases and strokes. You move around my apartment, my window, the veranda, the window net, my kitchen, the sink. Even to the bathroom, if I try to take if I'm having my bath, the color of the water, the stains on the sink is always black. Activists say environmental rules are often not implemented in Nigeria because of weak state resources and widespread corruption. Well, I'm joined now by Choma Ude. She is one of the biggest names in Nigerian cinema, but you wouldn't have seen her in front of or directly behind any camera, except for here, of course, because she is the founder of Africa International Film Festival, which six years ago brought together the work of filmmakers from across Nigeria for festival goers to enjoy, and now is going to include hundreds of productions from around the world. From the beginning, the week-long event also offered a chance to learn the ins and outs of a tricky trade with workshops held alongside screenings. And she's very kindly taken the time out to pop in to visit us on her way through Paris. Chiamba, it's a real pleasure. Thanks very much for coming in to see us. Thank you for welcoming me too. Well, great. Well, um, the, the Africa International Festival has an amazing reputation. It's done great things to really put the spotlight on to African film. But is it for you still about really highlighting Nollywood itself or has it gone beyond that? Um, it's gone beyond that. But we're still very focused on Nollywood. Uh, the festival started with focusing on Nollywood, young uh, uh, professionals also. But then again, we've had so much interest from the outside world. So in, in having a festival every year, we've ex expanded on what we originally do. Yeah. And some of that interest actually led you to think of this year adding a bit of a French touch, I understand. Um, yes, uh, but I was approached, like, once again, I was approached by the French uh, government, I would say. Uh, French arm of the government in Nigeria to incorporate a film festival, a French film festival into the AFRIF. So, uh, and it works very much in line with what we want to do. So it's very welcomed and we understand the growth it would bring to the um, African cinema. Uh, why do you think um, festival goers in Nigeria, in uh, Lagos, because uh -huh. it's been it's being held in Lagos this year, right? Yes. Um, why would festival goers in Lagos necessarily have an appetite for French-speaking film? Um, so what we're trying, what we're doing with that is embracing. Last year, our theme was really embracing the world. So if we're really in line with our theme, then we're we're looking more towards everybody else. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not it's not a question of us uh, uh, um, the festival goers in Lagos. Em embracing the festival towards French. It's about every, the French coming on board. It's about co-production. It's about incorporating uh, different aspects of film. So I'll tell you what, we do a lot of training. Uh, we have a lot of technology we'd like to uh, embrace also and grow with and develop. We have, we're, we're, very, we're hell bent on uh, making our skills a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. So in embracing the French film festival, it's not so much about just the French, it's about what the French brings mm -hmm. as a package, mm -hmm. yes. And how have you found the aspect of, of, of learning in terms of the festival? Is, is that as important to you as getting people to actually enjoy what's on the screen itself? It's extremely important to me because if, if, if you're not learning and progressing and doing better, then people would, it becomes stagnant. And I don't want to talk about other film festivals, but, uh, there's a lot to do with growth and, and um, enjoying what you do, yeah. And Nigeria's in its worst recession ever. Ever. How has that affected putting the festival together for you? Um, very surprising. Uh, it hasn't. It really hasn't. Ah. No, not much. I, would, I wouldn't say it hasn't. We're, be, we're very creative people. And so now we're looking outwards, uh, embracing other culture embracing other organizations uh, for film. Now, we're very lucky with what we're doing. 
the festival is at the, at the stage where the outside world is looking in. So we are um, getting funding from out of Nigeria for the festival. Thank you very much, Shima. Well, we're really looking forward to hopefully having casting our eye over what's going on at the festival when that goes on in November. Chioma Ude there joining us. Thanks for you taking your time to watch us. France 24 Eye on Africa there. Join us again if you can. Take care.